This video is brought to you by eapfoundation.com, the website for all your academic English needs. So this video, which is part of the Research for Academic Studies series, will be looking at how to search for information. When conducting research, you'll need to use various resources to find information. For example, library catalogues, online databases such as ERIC, JSTOR or EBSCO if your school or university subscribes to these. And especially before you start university, you may need to use search engines to get information such as Google, Google Scholar, Bing and Yahoo. In order to use any of these tools effectively, you need to do three things and that's what we will look at in this video. First, identify key words. Second, make use of Boolean operators. And third, try to use some more advanced search techniques. So first, let's take a look at identifying key words. Obviously, before you begin searching, you need to make sure you are identifying the right kind of key words that will get the kind of information that you need. One way to do this is to brainstorm for key words. Just like when you're brainstorming as part of the writing process, you'll want to get as many words and ideas as possible and then choose the best ones for your search. A second way to identify key words is to use the thesis statement if you've already written one. So if you have a thesis statement already, look at it and pull out the main words and use these in your search. If you need to develop research questions as part of your research, then try to identify key words from those and use them in your search. Finally, as your research develops and you find sources, you should use these sources to compile an initial reference section and you can use this to identify more key words by looking at the titles of sources you already plan to use or possibly identify authors who are experts in the field that you want to search more information from. Next, let's look at Boolean operators. What are Boolean operators? Well, these are operators which are used with conditional statements in programming, search engines, algorithms and formulae. In terms of searching for information, there are three main ones, AND, NOT and OR. Boolean operators are useful for searching not just search engines, but also library catalogues and online databases. And they are used to either expand or limit the search, depending on the operator. One important point about Boolean operators is they must be capitalized in order to be recognized. Otherwise, they will be ignored in the search. So the operator AND is used to limit searches by requiring both or all terms to be included. Uh, in practice, most databases or search engines will just ignore this operator since searches are AND by default. In contrast, the operator NOT is much more useful. Again, this limits searches this time by excluding one or more terms. An alternative is the minus sign, which is attached to the beginning of the word which is going to be ignored. You need to be careful because not every database or search engine will use both of these. For example, EBSCO uses NOT, but not the minus sign. Google uses the minus sign, but not NOT, while Bing uses both. Let's look at an example of how this affects results. So if I do a very broad search for green tea, I get over one billion results. Now, if I'm doing research for an academic paper, I'm not interested in buying green tea, so I might want to exclude the words shop or price or buy. And if I now search, it limits the results to just over 700 million. Still a lot, but far fewer than before, and the results will be more relevant to my research. The third Boolean operator, OR, unlike the other two, is used to expand rather than limit searches by returning results which contain either or both of the terms in the search. So taking the results I had for green tea and this time searching for green or tea, I get many more results, 19 billion, because this is all the results for green plus all of the results for tea. In practice, this operator is much less useful because generally you will have too many results and you need to find a way to limit or reduce them rather than expand them. Finally, let's take a look at advanced searches.
So these are especially useful for online searches. The first of these is quotation marks, which limit the search by requiring results to contain the exact phrase searched for. And this one actually works not only in search engines, but library catalogues and databases. So for example, this time my search is for green tea and antioxidant. And this produces over 52 million results. However, the results I'm interested in are about green tea specifically, not just results with green somewhere and tea somewhere else. So if I put green tea in quotation marks, meaning those two words must occur together, then it reduces the results to just over 12 million. Next, the site operator. So this one is for online search engines and it limits the results to a particular site or particular domain. This is especially useful for academic searches because you can limit the results to academic sites. The most common of these is the .edu site, which is for university sites in most countries. Although in England, .ac.uk is used instead for universities. You can also use .gov to find government domains, since information from government sites like educational sites should be quite reliable. Make sure you don't leave a space between the site operator and the site or domain you're searching for. So for example, if I look at the green tea antioxidant search that I just had, if I limit that by just looking at edu sites using the operator site colon dot edu, that reduces drastically to 33,600 results. Maybe there's a particular university that I know has important research in this area. So in this example, Cornell University, and the site is cornell.edu. So if I limit my search by using site colon cornell.edu, I now have just over 100 results. So with this operator, I've gone from over 12 million to just over 100 results. Next, the file type operator. Again, this is used for search engines, and it limits the results by specifying a particular file type, such as PDF or doc. This might be useful if you're trying to find a research article which may often exist as a PDF document on the web. So again, using the example we just had, green tea antioxidant, if I now limit that by just looking for PDF documents, then I have just over 17,000. Next, the entitle operator again for search engines. This operator is used to specify a word or a phrase which must appear in the title. Uh, if you're using a phrase, you need to enclose it in quotation marks. So again, using the previous example, green tea antioxidant, if I add the operator entitle colon heart, in order to find articles with heart in the title, it reduces to 22,000 results. Maybe I want to be a bit more specific and have articles with the phrase heart disease in the title. So entitle colon quotation marks heart disease, close quotation marks. And now I have just over 2,000 results. Finally, wildcards. So many databases and search engines allow the use of wildcards. And these are symbols which can replace characters or whole words. The most common symbol used as a wildcard is the asterisk symbol. And this is one that can be used in online databases as well as search engines. Although these two treat wildcards in different ways. For online databases such as EBSCO, the wildcard replaces letters. So for example, if I search for ALLERG asterisk, it would return searches with allergy, allergies, allergen, and allergic, because they all begin with the same letters. Wildcards are much less useful for online search engines, because in online search engines, the wildcard is used to replace a word in an exact phrase. So, for example, if I search for green tea asterisk benefits in quotation marks, it would return results that include green tea health benefits, green tea's amazing benefits, green tea can have benefits, and green tea and anti-aging benefits. So that's a short introduction about how to search for information. So next time you need to search for information, remember to first identify keywords by brainstorming, looking at your thesis statement or your research questions, or your reference section as you build it up, especially titles or authors. Secondly, think about using Boolean operators and, not, or. 
And finally, try to use some advanced search techniques. Quotation marks, site colon, file type colon, entitle colon, and wildcards. For more information, please visit the website eapfoundation.com forward slash writing forward slash research forward slash search.